video, we are going to solve the following beam. Uh, it's a continuous beam, and we're going to do this uh, four different ways. We're going to use RISA to conduct an elastic analysis. Then we'll use the results from the RISA analysis to uh, go into the AISC steel manual and select a section for the continuous case. We'll reanalyze the beam as a simply supported beam, and then we'll look at the moment redistribution in beams method that is in the AISC specs section B 3.7 which essentially takes and redistributes the maximum negative moment to the positive moment it takes about a 10 percent of the maximum moment and redistributes it to the uh, positive portion of, of the segment and we've finished this example um, with a plastic analysis design First, we're going to go ahead and solve this using RISA. And as in previous videos, here are the steps that we're going to take to uh, essentially solve this problem. We're going to modify the global parameters. Uh, the description will give a brief description. And then we'll set the codes. In this case, we're going to use the 2010 AISC uh, Steel Construction Manual. Uh, the next item is we're going to make sure that the units are in the imperial system. Uh, and then modify the grid. And then we'll create the model by first drawing the members. And here we're going to make an assumption about the section that we're going to use. And we'll set the material to A992. Uh, then we'll set appropriate lateral supports. We'll have to do this so that um, there is no lateral torsional buckling in this beam. And we'll do that in the modify design portion uh, of the of RISA. Then we'll set appropriate boundary conditions. Um, and then finally we'll get to the loads and so when uh, inputting the loads we're going to make sure that we use the basic load case descriptions for each load when we define those basic load cases we will have to include uh, the beam weight using the Y gravity option uh, we'll then apply those loads and then um, we'll create our Load combinations using the load combination generator will perform the solution and design the beam section, uh, essentially selecting the lightest section uh, using the merger member suggested shapes. So the first thing we need to do is go into global parameters. This is an example. And then we'll go to codes. And in codes, we're going to make sure that we use the LIFD uh, 14th edition 2010 AISC manual. We'll uh, also get rid of this adjust stiffness parameter. Um, and so the next thing we're going to make sure that we are using imperial units and yes in fact we are so we'll move on. Next item is we modify the grid and we have uh, a couple different uh, spacings or spans. So I'm going to do 11 spaces at 10 feet and that'll give us the proper number uh, of spaces in the grid and this will go one at one so this is my grid I will go ahead and create the members now so I got a 40 foot span notice here we have uh, a W8 by 10 I'm gonna go ahead and use that section one thing I need to change is the material this is uh, 836 but we need to use a 992 50 K size steel so we'll go ahead and create this Members, the last span is 30 feet. Once we have the members created, the next step is very important. We want to make sure that it's braced laterally. So here, we'll go to Modify Design. And in Modify Design, in the previous video, we set the unsupported length to the full dimension of the members. In this case, we have a fully supported compressive flange. So we're going to set this to zero. I'll do the same for the bottom in case we have a negative bending moment, which we do. Uh, so it's fully supported. And so that will uh, take care of the lateral support for this beam. We'll uh, apply to all selected members. All members are select selected, so we'll go ahead and apply. And then the next item is we're going to have to go in and apply some boundary conditions. The one of the supports is fixed. Again, we're going to make sure that this do not translate out of the two-dimensional plane or that no reactions are developed out of two-dimensional plane. So we'll go ahead and do this. That's a fixed support. The rest of my roller, so I'll need to release 
the y trans the x translation and the z rotation and so we go ahead and apply those supports and then now we create our basic load cases and basic load cases we have a dead load and here we're going to have to include the beam weight which is negative 1.2 uh, times the beam weight. This is the load factor. Then we do a live load. By the way, we have to categorize this as dead and this one as live. And so get rid of that and then apply our loadings. We have a 1.67 dead load, 1.67 kit per foot. Uh, and then we're going to apply it to all selected members. Uh, so it'll do it for us. And the next item is we're going to go ahead and do the live load. The live load is 1. So get rid of that and apply it all selected members as my live load. Now we do our load combinations. And in load combinations, we're going to generate the load combinations using ASCE 7 strength, uh, the 2010 code. Uh, we don't have any roof live load, snow load, or rain load. So let's get rid of those. Generate our load combos and we got two of them. Great. Next we solve the problem. And here I could use a batch solution or an envelope. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a single combination. I know the strength 2 is the governing load combination, so I'll go ahead and solve it using that combination. We get um, the results, and one of the things we want to do right away is uh, look at the suggested design shapes. Uh, we started with 8 by 10, but RISA uh, correctly increases the size. Uh, up to a W24 by 55. So let us go ahead and resolve the problem using, by, we do this by right clicking in this box, solve again using suggested shapes. This tells us that we're going to have to uh, resolve the problem and of course we do and so now there are no suggested shapes which means that these are the correct shapes. We can now go ahead and turn off the grid and the loading and so uh, we can go in and look at the design results. And the design results, here we have a lot of great information. This UC Max uh, is the ratio of the capacity of the beam to the uh, moment, the required capacity. So this uh, is pretty close to one, very efficient. Um, this is the location of the maximum moment. In this case, is at 40 feet. Uh, the other span is a zero, which is the location of the I node or the starting of the member. This is also zero. Um, we also have a shear check. Notice very small number, so we have a, a large capacity. Um, and the last thing, um, I think I said this was the ratio of the required capacity to the available capacity. And so here's the available capacity of a 502.5 kib feet. Um, and so we go ahead and do one more thing, a moment diagram. We can go up in here uh, and check our moment diagram. Go 100%, apply. So there's the moment diagram. Uh, positive moments. These are positive moments. Uh, Rice is upside down. The other thing we can do is uh, we can check the details for each of these members. So here, notice we have um, all the checks, the max bending check, location of where the maximum moment occurs, um, the unsupported length, uh, is set to zero for the compression flange, so that's good. We can do this for other members. Once again, notice zero, the compressive flange, unsupported length. That's important. Uh, all right.